Hey YouTube, what is up? It is me, Camilla Erin. I am making a video today. This one is from In My Garage. I am currently was doing an outdoor video. I started filming this on my porch by my garden and it started pouring, like really raining hard. Anyhow, my video today is going to be, I'm going to be talking about parents of trans children and it can be adult children or children that are you know, just teenagers, or younger even. I don't know why that shouldn't be happening, but we're gonna talk about it, and um, ways that you can be a better parent to your child, ch then you can be supportive, but you do not wanna be overly supportive because transitioning for children is not uh, a good thing. And historically, it didn't even occur until like 15 years ago. 10 years ago, like whatsoever. And there was like maybe like five or six transitioned trans people, like at 16. I think Ken Petrus was the first girl in Germany to get her gender reassignment surgery under 18. I don't support youth and minors getting transgender health treatment. It is not right. If you're not old enough to vape or to get tattoos, you're not old enough to change your sex and you can't make a decision that can sterilize you forever when you're just you know 14 you're not old enough you haven't had enough jobs been to enough interviews to know what discrimination is um depending on how you look and how you sound it can even be harder for you than other people some people have it easier than others and some people are like i've been on in my transition about it a little over a decade on hormones and my parents have got God to go through so much to be supportive for me. I'm so grateful for them and I'm glad that they made me wait until I was an adult to transition because it allowed me to grow up and develop properly and mentally. I did not grow a big skeleton. I did not grow tall. Um, very small in general for a trans woman and I'm very proud of myself and um, worked really hard. I legally changed my gender. I've legally changed my license to female. My name is Camilla and I was born Aaron, but I still use Aaron because it's gender neutral. The reason I don't support children transitioning is simple. It's a social contagion and even 10 years ago it was more or less unheard of. It was virtually unheard of, like zilch. All right, now we have children, more children are trying to transition than adults. And most people that are real transsexuals, they have a medical condition. Like they literally deal, they had gender identity disorder when the DSM-4 called it gender identity disorder. And all the predecessors were even lesser terminology. They tried to make it sound prettier and call it gender dysphoria in the DSM-5. That's the American Psychological Association's uh, book to diagnose disorders. And gender dysphoria is recognized as a psychiatric illness and it's incurable. So all that science had to offer me was cross-sex hormones and surgery and allowing me to change my gender legally so that I could live as a woman for all intents and purposes. I'm not a woman, never will be one. I know that, but I am saying that it allows us to do this. And you can wait until you're 21 years old to transition and still become, you know, have a very successful transition. You can look like Blair White. And she started at the same age I did. So there's always, you know, people out there that say, oh, if I don't start now, I'll never, you know, look pretty. That's not true at all. And you probably should wait. It gives you more insight and honestly it gives you more insight and in, in look into life being able to be perceived as both genders at some point in your life uh different ones because you change your gender but it gives you a different look on life and you've seen it through both lenses female and male so more or less i just don't think children are old enough to um commit to that and I suggest you know if if I was a parent and had a trans child if even and hypothetically let's say I'm not transgender I'm just a regular woman like if I had children um that were you know 10 and up that are and I would not 
do anything to support under 10. But if they're hit puberty at least and they're trying to transition, I will not support them doing anything medically to their body. The most I would let them do is if it was a boy, I would let one of my parents do some I, I could do. I would let me have long hair, bought me a hair straightener, and let me wear girls' pants and girls' shirts. No dresses. Um, so, I mean, like, they let me kind of, like, express myself, and I came out as bi and everything, and I came out to my mom as trans when I was a teenager, when I was, like, 11, 12 or 13, and I, you know, she knew my, it's been that way my whole life, it's never gone away. If you make your children wait, if they really aren't trans, by the time they're adults, they'll outgrow it, and they won't have any interest in going by they, them, or whatever pronoun they want to go by if they're different from the ones they're born as. So I'm, I'm just a big proponent of, you know, taking care of these children, limiting what they watch and, you know, being supportive parents and being cool, being hip, being nice, you know, being understanding, but at the same time being firm and assertive enough because you care about your child and you know that they're not old enough to to do that. You should know that. And I'm not telling you how to be a parent. Um, I don't want you to come at me and say, you're not their parents, I am. Now I understand that I'm not your children's parent. I'm not anyone's parent. And I'm gonna talk about why I don't adopt children in a bit. But I'm telling you this out of love for people that are dealing with gender dysphoria, like real trans people. You may have a child that truly has gender dysphoria, a medical condition. You may have a true transsexual child, and that child will eventually transition. But limit them what they can do until they're old enough. To, till they're, but I would say until I wouldn't be supportive in their life until they're at least 21. I know 18 is legally an adult here in the United States. Uh, in Japan, I think it's 20. It's different ages and different numbers for different countries, but overall, I think 20 to 21 should be the youngest that someone should start this because um, there's a lot of negative repercussions to it. You're going to face discrimination in the workplace. You're going to face discrimination in dating and finding a partner. Um, you're it limits you in so many ways. It costs a ton of money to upkeep insurance to maintain your transition, to maintain your hormones, to pay those hormone copays every month. Um, and how much, I did a figure of $250,000 the past 10 years. That's a, that calculates and includes what the insurance paid out for procedures like rhinoplasty, uh, cheek augmentation, or my Botox and Juvederm or my facial hair removal, all of the wardrobe that everything I've ever bought in the past 10 years, clothing and purse wise, <clears throat> and uh, my medicine, and like in the therapy that was required to make it there. I've spent about a, a quarter million on my transition. And that's why, um, you know, it, it it's very expensive and it's a lifelong journey. I wouldn't do, I didn't wake up one day and decide I'm gonna change my sex. And, that's what the social contagion is, more or less. They see it, they watch a few videos in a month, they're ready to transition. Don't let them, it's not worth it. And let them be children. Let them experience a children experience. That's youth, they'll net you. You know how bad it, you'd like to be a kid again. I do too, but let them have that. Let them be kids. Um, and the reason I don't have children is I don't want my, Children, if I adopt a child, we're not gonna have any biology relations, no biological attachment or relationship. I would truly be a great mother, I do believe. I'm financially stable. I am in my mid thirties and um, I have a partner that I do care about even though my relationship is not the best right now. What I'm stating is that I could, but the reason that I don't is because of the stigma behind having a transgender parent and also I don't want my transsexuality to come out in them. I don't want them to think they're trans just because I am. And my partner is trans too. And it would just be so coincidental and I don't think that that would be the best that wouldn't look good on my part. 
and now I feel guilty. Um, also, I feel like, it, as I stated just a second ago, all that goes into maintaining this, the therapy, the hormones each week, the shots, the pills each day, and all that stuff that you have to do. And sometimes you'll get surgeries where you're out on commission for a month or two months at a time. Parents don't have two months to sacrifice. And you're going to be getting revisions on surgeries. Like, even if you only plan to get three or four surgeries in your life, if you have to revise every one of those at least once, that's at least eight surgeries, eight months. And if you have a young child, I mean, there's so many factors that go into maintaining and becoming a trans person that presents well in the world. Not to pass, but to present well and to get called the correct pronouns. It's like, you know, it's tough. And... You know, it's not easy. You'd never understand. You may sympathize, but you cannot empathize if you're not a transsexual. And children just don't need to play this game. It's an adult's game. And I do believe it's a treatment for a condition, but certain types of treatment should be held for last resort. I do believe transition is a last resort for the dysphoria. If I could have been happy being a man, and found not I had a wonderful girlfriend as a guy um I, I had a great co went to college I had a great life it's not that I was dissatisfied who I was as a guy I had gender dysphoria my brain and body did not match and this is the best science has to offer I'm not giving any medical advice in this video I'm sharing my experience and I'm, I'm sharing my opinions and the last thing I'm going to touch base on is next. Um, next is death. Um, I feel bad for next. The the she was a impressionable teen and was bullied. Unfortunately, I was bullied for being gay, or they everyone thought I was gay when I was a kid. So that's what I got picked on for. Um, next was bullied. And it's, it sucks, but it, it is what it is. I'm trying to think, what is Nex's last name? Nex Bonaparte? Nex Benedict. Nex Benedict. B. I knew it started with a B. English is my second language. So it's like, um, Nex Benedict, and you know, that girl's death is sad. We don't know what she died from. We haven't seen her toxicology report and the trans community is jumping into conclusions, but you can see video footage after the fight, the supposed fight of Nex in the hospital. Her name is Sue, uh, Sue Benedict. That's Nex's real name. And Sue and her mom, and Sue was talking to the report, uh, the, no, it was a police cam. It was an Axon body cam by the police. <laughs> she was completely fine, like no concussion or anything. I I really doubt that anything happened to her physically. That her got that fight didn't cause that child's death. And if that child wasn't involved in transgender stuff or non-binary stuff, because non-binary stuff is not real, and it's definitely not transgender stuff. Um, you know, it's horrible and that's what happens. You know, you don't want to get involved in that, but the community is just jumping to conclusions and if they jump to conclusions and they find a toxicology report that says otherwise, it makes the community look bad and the community is just making itself look worse and worse and worse with its woke ideology and the trans narrative has changed to be so liberal, it's bad. I'm a very conservative trans woman. I'm a Christian trans woman. And I, I see things different than most trans people. So I'm going to post this video. If you liked it, um, I hope you gained some insight. If you want to see a part two of this video or me to elaborate, go ahead and comment. Let me know if you want to learn more. I have a lot to share um, based on my own parents' experience. And I can ask them questions and come up with a part two. Uh, whatever y'all would like, just go ahead and comment it. Please be polite. Um, no arguing in the comments, please. That is upsetting to see. I had to delete a comment because there was a comment war on one particular comment. It was a negative comment, but I didn't delete it because of the negative comment. I got it because there was a bickering going on, and I just want to create a safe learning space for everyone. 
So I will eliminate and delete rude comments just because it's not, I don't take anything personally, but as I said, I just want, you know, everyone to feel welcome in the comment section. Um, please like this video, uh, share this video if that, if you'd like, I really appreciate it, it mean a lot to me, and uh, go ahead and subscribe, because if you like, if you watch this far, I think you should subscribe, and I do videos once or twice a week, and I give you a fresh outlook on trans matters, I uh, hope this helps, bye bye, thank you so much.